that we're in. Kia ora. I call Honi Hauerera. Kia ora, Mr. Speaker. Kia ora tato katoe te whare. Mr. Speaker, we've heard what National's budget will be for the next 12 months, but before we look forward, I suggest we take a good look at where we are right now. We've got 160,000 unemployed, another 107,000 who can't get enough work. We've got 500,000 people earning less than $16 an hour. We've got 200,000 kids and their families living in poverty right here in Aotearoa. Because of all that, We've also got 52,000 Kiwis leaving for Australia every year because the wages are higher, there are heaps more jobs, and the first $18,000 is tax-free. And Māori are leaving in their droves because they get a chance to show what they can do away from a deeply racist society. And I say to them all, go with our blessings, flourish and succeed, and then come back one day and turn this place on its head. So that's where we are right now. And where is it that this government is taking us over the next 12 months? What is the nature of the budget they propose to help rebuild our nation? Well, Bill English calls it a zero budget, and for once I suspect a lot of people agree with him, because it is certainly a budget that offers zero opportunity, zero growth, zero solutions, and zero hope for the thousands of Kiwis who are asking why they bother to stay here. Yes, there's a global financial crisis, but that doesn't mean we have to follow the failed austerity policies from the other side of the world. The fact is that we have been conned into thinking that a zero budget is what we need to get back into the global game, to become a player again in the global economy. But just what is this zero budget and what does it mean for ordinary New Zealanders? Well, what it means is that if you want money for health, you're going to get zero. If you want money for education, you'll get zero. If you want money for housing, you'll get zero. If you want money for decent wages, you'll get zero. If it's money for old people, you're going to get zero. And of course, the Māori Party insists on being an equal coalition partner, so they've got zero as well. <laughs> zero dollars for Kohanga Reo, zero dollars for Kura Kaupapa, zero dollars for Wānanga, zero dollars for Hauora Māori, and now they can boast that they also got zero dollars for Marae Development, Māori Employment Initiatives, Māori Economic Development, Mātauranga Māori, for implementing the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, for cultural and intellectual property rights, for the rights to Te Reo Māori, for Māori broadcasting and for Māori land and resource development. And all they got was a squeak for their flagship program, Whānau Ora. And as for Te Puni Kōkiri, the future is even worse, because not only will they lose money, they will also lose many of their programs and a whole bunch of their staff as well. You see, Mr. Speaker, what this whole zero budget beat up is, is about is making poor people think that they have to give up something just like everyone else, when in fact they're the only ones giving something up. The rich aren't giving up bugger all. In fact, with the assistance of this national government, rich people will still be able to play the financial markets and pay no tax. Finance companies can still fail knowing that National will bail them out. Company directors can steal hundreds of millions of dollars and keep their knighthoods while poor people steal from a dairy and go to jail. Wealthy private contractors already control much of our health sector. Now they're lining up to take over our education system, run our prisons and take over accident compensation as well. Rich people here pay a lower tax rate than in France, Australia, Germany, Ireland, Japan, the Netherlands, the UK and even the USA. Government is proposing to let big business walk away from wage negotiations while fining workers for daring to strike. Rich people will be the only ones who can afford to buy our state assets. And as we've seen just over the past few days, filthy rich people with filthy little minds will still be able to give the unbackable ACT Party unbelievable amounts of money to do unspeakable things to Māori while the Race Relations Commissioner puffs and puffs and does nothing about it. Somehow, Mr Speaker, this whole zero budget thing only seems to zero in on the poor and the dispossessed. So what does Mana think we should be doing? Simple. Ignore the demands to cripple the poor to keep the rich afloat. That's the solution they tried in Europe and the people over there are finally waking up to the fact that it ain't working. 
then redistribute the wealth to ensure that all New Zealanders can become positive contributors to the nation's economy. Yesterday, Bill English called on MANA to support offshore oil drilling if we really supported job creation. MANA's response is that we won't be supporting offshore oil drilling because it's not about job creation, it's about wealth creation for overseas businesses who this government licenses to rape our seas, leave the mess and sail away with 94% of the profits. MANA's response is to say tax the rich and free the poor. Reverse National's $2 billion of tax cuts to wealthy New Zealanders, lift the tax rate for the super rich from 33% to 45%, Establish a proper capital gains tax where all income, regardless of where it comes from, is taxed at the personal tax rate. Replace GST with a financial transaction tax, which will put money straight into the hands of the poor, reduce speculation on the Kiwi dollar, and increase our export earnings. Commit at least 20% of tobacco taxes to tobacco cessation programs. Make the first $27,000 of a person a person earns tax-free so that everyone gets a decent start in life. Here's a biggie. Spend whatever it takes to eliminate acute rheumatic fever. At the moment, 98% of those who get this disease of the super poor are Māori and Pacific Island children. If it was Pākehā kids suffering, I guarantee it would be on the front pages of the nation's papers today. The first item on the news tonight, a national scandal tomorrow, and by next week, legislation would be passed to eliminate the problem. A measly $3 million for throat swabs just because the kids are brown is a bloody disgrace. And an indictment on the racism that underpins the way in which health funds are spent in this country. Help new mums get a start in life by offering them assistance with newborns instead of contraception and helping them with money for their kids to go to school. It's not hard. It's what they do in Australia. Drop the lie about bigger classes being good for a child's education. The research doesn't support it, teachers don't buy it, parents don't agree with it, and I bet no government minister is going to let their kids get put into bigger classes. So if you're not going to have it for your kids, don't impose it on anyone else. Make it easier for kids to go to university by increasing access to student allowances and extend student allowances to cover postgraduate study. Lift the minimum wage from $13.50 to $20 an hour launch a program to build 20,000 state houses over the next two years. This would instantly reduce unemployment and create apprenticeships in building, plumbing, electrical work, painting and cabinet making. It would be a huge social and economic investment, investment in the future of our nation. It will create jobs, begin to lower our startling levels of homelessness, reduce health problems for the poor, and it can all be paid for by people renting their houses. And cancel prescription charge increases because they hurt poor people and old people. Here's an email I got from a constituent just yesterday. It reads like this. Kia ora ra. My mum is 80 this year, worked two jobs most of her working life to feed us when we were kids and still feeds her mokopuna from her garden. She turned her hot water cylinder off three years ago when her partner died to keep the power bill down. My mokopuna went to stay with her one night and said, oh, I had to have a cold bucket bath at Nan's. My mum and her peers are really stressed about the $2 hike in prescriptions. Like most elderly, she takes up to 10 pills a day. Mr. Speaker, these are common sense proposals, which a generation ago would have been mainstream policies to help build a decent New Zealand. We can't go back to the past, but we can bring forward the values of previous generations to turn our future around. Tax the rich and free the poor. It might sound like a radical suggestion in this house, but it is one that is gathering strength on the streets of this country. Kia ora tato katoa. I call the Honourable John Banks. Mr Speaker, let's start with one indisputable...